Hopefully it is evident by the title over my head or under my head, depending on where you're watching this. But today's video is all about fall shoes, maybe winter, depending on where you live and how to wear them. So I have some specific shoe styles that are just staples of my fall and winter wardrobe. Some that are a little more on trend, some are classic. I'm gonna walk you through how to wear them, what to wear them with, give you some specific recommendations and all that info, cause I'm gonna throw a ton of stuff at you, can all be found down in the description box, which is usually found underneath me where all that text is, where it says more. And I also pin it to the top of the comment section. So either of those places should be where you can find all of that info. Now the appeal of these fall shoes that I have chosen for you is that these can all be worn with pretty much anything you're gonna wear in your fall closet, with the exception of one category that I like to call house shoes. You can wear them with any kind of pant, jeans, joggers, wide leg, more narrow leg, leggings, skirts, dresses. There will be some adjustments on the width of the leg style or the height of the inseam or dress or skirt, but that's what is so great about all of these shoes is it gives you tons of options. And having several of these styles will give your wardrobe a different look every time you pair them with a different style of shoe. Let's start with my most favorite type of shoe that I wear in the fall and winter, and that is the ankle boot or booty, shorter boot, however you wanna describe this. So back in the day, it used to be really easy to figure out how to wear these because skinny jeans were the predominant jean silhouette and we knew exactly where that inseam needed to end, to roll, not to roll, et cetera. Now that we have expanded the style of pants and jeans to include straight legs, slim straight, boot cut, wide leg, trouser jeans, all the things, it makes things a little more unclear, actually a lot more unclear. And I'm not sure if what I'm about to share with you is gonna make it better or worse. So let's stick to the straight leg style. There are no rules, but I'm gonna use the word rule here, okay? It's all subjective. Generally speaking, when you're use, wearing a straight leg style of pant or jean, you want the end of the pant to end about an inch or so above the booty. Now these booties actually go up pretty high up on a, and, or above a little bit above my ankle. So these aren't the best style to wear with straight leg, unless you have a slightly cropped straight leg jean. You want something a little bit lower on the leg then, like these, these are cut a little bit lower. That's for straight leg style. Now, if you're wearing a wide leg silhouette, then you do want something like this or even the shaft going up a little higher so the pant itself comes a little bit below the top of the booty. Is that clear or is it clear as mud? I don't know, hoping to help. Now, if you're wearing booties with a skirt or a dress, it can get a little tricky if you're wearing a shorter length dress or skirt. I'm talking at knee length, above the knee, something other than a maxi skirt or dress, basically. If you have shorter legs or you're just more self-conscious about your legs and you're wearing an ankle boot with a shorter dress or skirt, it can actually cut your leg off and make your legs look thicker and shorter. Now, there are ways to avoid this. First of all, I think it really helps. You're gonna see me show a lot of neutral colored type shoes. That's my personal preference. I may have a bit of a hoarding problem, but. If you can get the boot or booty to be as close to your skin tone as possible, that helps elongate everything and it will lessen the cutting off effect. Another thing to look at is, again, the height of the shaft. You're gonna want something that's either lower on the ankle like this, that really shows even more leg, or weirdly, you want a shaft that goes a little bit higher. I'm gonna give you an example of that when we get to some subsets of booties. Yes, there are subsets. So at the end of the day, we have some rules. We have some rules of thumb, I should say, but really you're gonna have to just try on the shoe with the piece of clothing that you wanna wear it with, and you'll learn to know what to see in the mirror if you like it or not. I will also add, let me bring my favorites back, that a slight more pointed toe, it doesn't have to be like a witch's shoe, but a more pointed or almond toe is generally more flattering, elongates the leg than a rounded toe, which tends to make your foot look a little stumpy and make the leg look shorter and thicker. Now we get to an interesting subset, the Chelsea booty. So this style has become rather popular in recent years. And what's interesting about the Chelsea boot or booty is that it's really a menswear style that it's found its way over to the women's side as well. So it's a little bit of a nod to the menswear look. It's a little more edgy. And honestly, I think it's a little harder to wear. You can get them as a flat. You can get them with a lug sole. 
You can get them with a heel. I think you know where I'm going with this. If I can wear a heel, I'm gonna wear a heel. That is my personal preference. I know there are a lot of you who can't or don't wanna wear heels and we will get to that and there are options. And I will include many recommendations for each type of shoe that I'm talking about. So please do check in the description box in the comments for those. It is my personal preference that Chelsea boots can look very heavy and really weigh down a look if you have too thick, not just the heel, but the whole like platform sole. Not a fan of that personally. So the one I like to recommend is one with a slightly taller shaft. This is what I'm talking about when you have that wide leg, it'll go right over it with a little bit of a heel and maybe a little bit of a platform as well in a more neutral or lighter color. I will say the only time I will personally reach for a pair of black Chelsea boots is when I'm wearing them with leggings. So I think these look best with a wider leg silhouette, a wider straight leg, a full on wide leg look. I also think these are fun to peek out of the bottom of a maxi skirt or a maxi dress. If you're going to wear them with more of a straight leg or slim straight style, then I would recommend a lower shaft same kind of rule of thumb as with the booties. Cropped style of pant means that you're gonna have about an inch above the ankle showing, give or take. I do wanna point this particular model out. This is one of my newest purchases. What's great about these is I love the taller shaft, so these are gonna look great with the longer skirts and dresses I have planned and my wide leg pants and jeans. These also come waterproof, so they are gonna be great for the rainy season if we ever get one. The second type of shoe that I wanna talk about for fall and winter are boots. And when I'm talking about boots, I'm talking about more of a traditional sort of straight shaft. You'll see it in suede, faux suede in this case, or leather. Maybe there's some embellishments. You can get it totally flat, like more like a riding boot, or you can get it with a stacked heel or even a stiletto heel. We will talk about other tall boots next, but generally speaking, I'm just talking about this general style. Here is another version. This is a newer to me pair and same thing. It's a different, this is real suede. I do personally prefer a stacked heel like this. I think it's a lot easier to walk around in and this is slightly rounded, but there's still some elongation and it does help, I think, that this is a very neutral, lighter tone. So as far as how high up on the leg the shaft of the boot should be, we are not seeing much in the way of over the knee boots. That used to be a huge trend. I have many pairs of them. I'm waiting till they come back. Now when I see an over the knee boot, to me it looks like it's a pirate costume. It looks a little too costumey for me. So just below the knee is generally what we're seeing this season. I think taller boots are a great way to wear a shorter dress or skirt to show some leg without actually showing much skin. So if you pick a skirt or dress that comes right to the knee or just right above the knee, and then you put on your taller boot, you're only showing about this much of skin. So it's a great way to feel a little more modest, have a little more coverage, stay a little warmer depending on where you are without showing actual skin or that much leg. So generally, I like to wear taller boots with a shorter skirt or dress for those reasons, or under a maxi skirt or a maxi dress. The only time I tend to reach for boots when I'm wearing pants or a pant type piece of clothing are leggings, or if I ever do pull out a skinny jean that I can tuck in, which is these days very rare. I do wanna talk about one subset of boots specifically, and that is the cowboy boot. Now this has become very fashionable all over the world in the state of Texas where I live. This is just a piece of clothing that everybody has in their closet. Although I will say this taller shaft, this comes just below the knee, is definitely more of a fashion look. If you're gonna actually get on a horse or work a ranch, it's not gonna be in this particular boot. It's gonna be you know, the lower shaft that is about mid calf. And those are generally just worn with boot cut jeans. But <laughs> the current trend for the fashion style Western or cowboy boot is a taller shaft now you can spend a small fortune like I have on a pair of Lucases. If you're gonna invest in a pair of cowboy boots that you will have for decades, I do recommend the Lucases. Uh, my husband, all of his dress shoes for years, he would wear them to court, he would wear them to work, were the Lucase Roper style. He's had them for some of them close to 30 years. Over the years, he's had to resole them a couple of times, but they really hold up so you can spend a lot of money or pretty much every fashion brand from Walmart to Dolce Vita and in between are showing a lot of Western style boots with the taller shaft in a variety of shades. This one happens to be from Dolce Vita, has the zip on the side here. So again, you would wear them just like you would wear the usual tall boot with a short dress or skirt, 
under a longer dress or skirt or with a pair of skinny jeans tucked in. Okay, we're on to the third specific type of shoe and this is one a lot of you prefer to wear and that is or are flats. It's a plural, so we're gonna go with they are flats. They're all kinds of flat shoes. I'm looking at a whole pile over here. Now, you have to remember I'm speaking from my own personal experience and as I sit here filming a fall shoes video, the high today is 90 degrees. So I prefer a mule style well into fall because it's still pretty hot here. All of the styles I'm about to share with you are also available in a fully closed shoe option. If you're gonna wear any of these flats with a closed shoe, my advice is to get yourself some really good no-show socks. I know right now there's a cute little trend where little ankle socks with ruffles. I think if, unless, you know what, I'm gonna offend someone if I actually tell you what I think. I think I don't like that, that trend, okay? I don't like it. So anyway, no-show socks if you're wearing clothes all the way in, you know, with a, with a back and all that. But if you live anywhere near where I am and it's still warm outside, I love a mule. Big trend, the loafer, you can get that in a flat, in a full shoe. Still popular to have some sort of embellishment or chain across the front. You can spend a lot of money. You don't have to spend a lot of money. I got these on Amazon. Another example of a flat. These are the Rothy's. These come in so many colors. They are incredibly comfortable. These are actually designed to not be worn with socks, but I do wanna point out that there are some things to me that apply across all shoe types. It's this toe option. I'm still a big fan of a pointier toe. It doesn't have to be a super narrow. I actually have wider feet, so I am appreciative of a wider toe box, but at the very end, your, your toes are not up here. This is just extra at the end. Just remember that. So a slightly elongated, pointier, almond, however you want to discuss it, toe is a definite more flattering look. Another style of flat we're seeing a lot is the cap toe. I'm a huge fan of these because again, you can see it's a more elongated toe. There is a little bit of height to this. I think a little bit of height helps so many of us in our outfits, I am just saying. I love the slip-on sneaker style as well. We'll talk about sneakers, that is coming up. I want to hop back to the loafer style because there is a type of shoe style that is all over every retailer and I cannot endorse it. It is the full-on loafer that has the thick lug sole. I feel like those are the most unflattering, unfeminine, Frankenstein-looking shoes I have ever seen. I know they're a trend. There's a lot of things that are trendy. I'm not jumping on this one, so I will not be recommending that style. Loafer style, sure. Just, can we lose some of that sole, please? Now, what to wear these with? The same general tips apply when I was speaking to the other kinds of shoes. If you're wearing a wider leg silhouette, you want the top of the pant to brush right across that break on the shoe right there and maybe just skim above the floor. You don't want it to be dragging on the floor or you want the hem of the pant to end about an inch or so above your ankle bone. That is the current general rule of thumb. The fourth type of shoe is by no means a must have in your closet, but if you wanna add a different style of shoe and really change the look of almost any outfit, it can make a very preppy or very classic outfit instantly look a little more fun, a little more whimsical, a little more bohemian. And I am talking about the clog. So you can either go for the open toe style that I'm personally loving, or as we move into cooler weather, the closed toe or even the full on closed clog look. These are a great way to bring heels into your wardrobe, but still make them easy to walk around in because most of them have a little bit of a platform and a very wide heel. So you're not gonna go teetering around. These personally, I feel like you need to wear them with longer, wider style pants or a longer, flowier maxi skirt or a maxi dress. I think it looks really odd to be worn with anything cropped. There are a lot of really fun styles across all kinds of price points and I've listed quite a few here. Check the description box for all of those links. Shoe style number five is obviously a shoe style you're gonna wear year round, sneakers. But I tend to wear sneakers more in the fall and winter because it's so hot where I live and just a fully enclosed shoe is very hot. I just get hot all over. So, couple styles I wanna talk about. The more athletic style, like this one, the On Cloud sneakers. There's some ones that I've seen over on Amazon that are the Adidas pull-on kind with no laces as well. If you want it to be a more fashion sneaker look, look for a solid color like white or even beige or taupe all the way around. Or you can go for more of a walking style sneaker, less of a workout. I have had these Madewell sneakers 
for a very, very, very long time and they are still on the market. Now I got rid of the shoelaces and added these no tie ones that I found on Amazon. They're actually one of my all time best sellers. You pull out the shoelaces, pop in these latex ones, and then it turns every shoe that has ties into a slip on kind. I love these and I will link them as well. So the tip on how to wear sneakers in the fall, pretty much the same rules, whether it's the more fashion type sneaker or a more athletic one, unless you're wearing leggings, they go like, they're going to go with all the leggings, right? That's a, that's easy. But if you want to wear them with pants, I think they look great with jeans, with joggers, any kind of athleisure where you want it to look like more athleisure wear. But just again, remember, it's not a great look if you want to stay more current to have the top of your pants hitting the top of the shoe here. You want it to end right at or just above the ankle bone for a more modern look. And again, it should go without saying, but I'm going to say it, no show socks. Now the last official category of shoes for fall and winter that I want to talk about as the temperatures drop are house shoes. Now some of these shoes that I'm going to share with you, you will leave the house in. Here's what I think about it. If you are literally wanting to put your best foot forward and present your best self to the world, these are not the shoes to have on your feet. If you're just about comfort and maybe looking a little bit cute, great. And I'm talking about the whole UGG style shoe. Whether you get a little shorter one just below the ankle or anywhere up as it goes, they're so ugly that they're cute. They're super comfortable. You don't have to buy the UGG brand. There's so many, I mean, Walmart has a real suede version themselves. This one's from Maurice's. We all know that they're comfortable. They're not, they're not cute. They, like no one's gonna convince me that they are. Do I own many pairs of them? Of course I do because they're still fun to wear. But if I wanted to leave the house, like I said, presenting my best self, looking a little more put together, I would swap these out for one of almost any of the other shoes that I'm sharing with you. Just again to remember, unless you're wearing these with leggings, that's the easy way. It's the same general rule with the inseam. You don't want to have your jeans kind of pooling around the top here of the shoe. That's a very frumpy dated look. If you want to look more modern and on trend, you still want it cropped above the top of the boot and a wider leg style isn't going to work as well as a more narrow or slim straight silhouette on a pant. Now the last category I want to talk about is not a specific type of shoe, but fabric and color. So I prefer wearing pumps for any kind of dressy occasion. I feel like I have more support in a pump. I also don't have to worry about my pedicure looking right. So I wanted to share the pump that I bought more than any other shoe in my closet, meaning I have bought, I think eight or nine pairs of these Sam Edelman Hazel pointed toe pumps. They are super comfortable. I did try to put these gel inserts in. I'm not, I'm not loving these. These are going to come out. They're fine without it. I have been wearing these for a while. I actually do wear these year round, but I want to point out if you are not wearing suede year round, now is the time to pull out your suede shoes. This shade is called cappuccino. It's a beautiful, neutral, lighter toned shade it goes with pretty much any outfit you own. So if you can only invest in one pair of pumps that are comfortable and go with everything and you can wear them year round, cappuccino, suede, hazel pointed toe pumps. But the other thing I want to talk about is color. Same shoe, just bought these. Same shoe, this is the leather version in a really rich brown. So if you're thinking more of the nude beige tone or maybe you had white pumps during the summer, you're always wearing black pumps, think about bringing in a warmer, richer brown tone just to add a different layer of dimension and bring kind of those fall colors all the way down to your feet. And I will tell you that the leather version is just as comfortable as the suede version. And another reason why I've ordered so many of these Sam Edelman Hazel pointed toe pumps is because once you know what size you are, you are always that size in whatever material they make this. And so you can just keep ordering them when they have a sale, whenever, and they have dressier ones, they have like holiday type versions, they have sparkly ones and metallic ones and embellished and all the things. So I just had to point out now is the season for suede and richer toned leather as well. So I hope that list was pretty comprehensive. If I've left anything out, please do not hesitate to ask me down in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. I hope that you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.